Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about one more theory of money demand for UGC net. And name of this theory is Friedman's Restatement of Quantity Theory of Money. Uh, Milton Friedman in 1956 beautifully restated old quantity theories of money. That's why this theory is called Friedman's Restatement of Quantity Theory of Money. One thing Milton Friedman clearly said, this theory is not about income, output or, pri or prizes. This theory is mainly about money demand. And according to this theory, we do money demand because we consider money as our asset. Now we are going to talk about demand for money is function of three variable. Means how much money we demand, it's all depend on these three variable. First most important variable that affect our money demand is total wealth. In reality, estimation of total wealth is not easily available because we invest our money on so many things. That's why income can serve as index of wealth. According to Friedman, income is surrogate of wealth, means in place of wealth, we can use income. Second factor that affect our money demand is division of wealth between human and non-human wealth. Means how much money we demand, it's all depend on how much money we want to spend on human wealth and how much money we want to spend on non-human wealth. Human wealth means our productive capacity and our wealth mainly depend on our productive capacity. Productive capacity means our skill, knowledge, experiences, etc. And non-human wealth means physical goods, for example, car, property, etc. And how much money we demand, it's all depend on how much money we want to spend on human wealth, means how much money we want to spend to acquire our skill, knowledge, etc. And how much money we want to spend to buy non-human wealth, for example, car, property, etc. Third factor that affect money demand is expected return, rate of return on money. How much money we demand, it's all depend on our profit expectation on money that we invest. For example, interest rate on bonds and dividend on shares or how much we think our property price will increase in future. Wealth is very important to determine money demand and wealth can be held in five different forms. First is money. Money include cash, demand deposit, time deposit, etc. Second is bonds. Bonds mainly provide us fixed income security. Equities. Equities means value of share in market. Physical and non-human goods include inventories of producer and consumer durable goods. Last is human capital or we can say the human wealth. Human wealth is a productive capacity of human being. For example, skill, knowledge, experiences of human. Now we will say formula to calculate current value of total wealth. W equal to Y over R. Here W is current value of total wealth. Y is total flow of expected income from five form of wealth. As we earlier discussed, five form of wealth, money, bonds, equity, non-human goods and human capital. How much income we expect from these five form of wealth will be called Y. And R is interest rate. And the formula of calculating current value of wealth is W current value of wealth. Y is total flow of expected income from a five form of wealth. And R is interest rate. Now we will see demand function for money for individual wealth holder. In this equation, M is the total stock of money demanded. P is the price level. M over P means demand for real cash balance or we can say that M over P means real demand for money. And real demand for money is function of all these variable. Or we can say the real demand for money depend on all these variable. How much money we, we will demand, it's all depend on all these variable. Here Y means real income and W means wealth in non-human form. We have already discussed about non-human wealth and R, RM is expected nominal rate of return from money. Means how much profit we expect from money which we are going to invest is equal to RM. And uh, RB is expected rate of return from bonds. Means how much interest rate you expect from bonds is called RB. And RE means expected rate of return from equity. Means how much a dividend you expect from your shares is equal to RE.
and uh, GP means expected change in prices of goods. So that you can know expected nominal return on your asset. Means how much you expect your property price will increase in future. So that you can know expected nominal return on your property. And U is a variable other than income that affect you, your utility with money. Now we will see how money supply can affect our national income when money demand is given. Means now we will see at given demand, at constant demand, how money supply can affect our national income. And in this theory, we assume money supply is very unpredictable, money supply is very unstable. We cannot easily predict money supply because money supply is decided by monetary authority. For example, Reserve Bank of India decide money supply. On the other hand, money demand is very stable, money demand is very predictable. We can easily predict money demand with the help of variable which we have earlier discussed. In this diagram on x-axis we have money demand and money supply and y-axis we have income. And this MD curve represent money demand and MS, M1, S1 represent money supply. Initial equilibrium point is E. At this equilibrium point you can see our national income is O Y. Now suppose money demand is constant only money supply increase. As money supply increase money supply curve will shift forward from M S to M1 S1. And E1 is our new equilibrium point. At this equilibrium point you can see money supply is more than money demand. Obviously when money supply is more than money demand national income will also increase because now people have more money to pay. Here you can see. Uh, earlier our national income was OY but as uh, money supply increase our national income also increased from OY to OY1. So here we see when money demand is constant only money supply increase then our national income will also increase. Obviously when national income increase total expenditure will also increase. Now we are going to talk about criticism of this theory. This theory gave broad definition of money means this theory includes so many things in money. For example, cash, coins, demand deposit, time deposit, etc. This theory gives so much emphasis on total wealth. Means this theory gives so much importance to total wealth. And don't talk about velocity of money. Money supply is not unstable. According to this theory, money supply is unstable. But this is not true. Ignore factors that affect money supply. There are so many factors that affect money supply. But this theory ignore factors that affect money supply. Don't consider time factor in this theory. This theory talk about there are so many factors that affect money demand. But how much time they will take to affect money demand means this theory don't consider time factor. So this is all about Friedman restatement theory. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.